Hello everybody, and this is the Mark 1 Assault Craft Spider. Now, as you can see, this looks a little bit like a confusion ship. Uh, what it is, it's two twin ships that get sent up as one. They split down the middle, which is what I'm going to do now if I bring F2 back up and tell it to T couple. D couple. There you go. And that should mean that I can activate my engine if I can click on her. Can I? There's my engine. Activate engine and let's boost away very slightly from my other craft. Now these are twin crafts. They are designed to work as a pair together. As you can see, uh, they are <laughs> They're very deliberately called spider assault craft for the very reason that they, they kind of look like big one, two, three, four, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. They've got eight arms. Yep, I am correct. I'm not going mad. Uh, they've got eight arms and they're designed to basically go up and scare the living crap out of anything. Now, assault craft, like bombers, are to, to classify them, uh, they are typified as instead of having lots of heavy weapons to just to get rid of capital class ships. Assault class ships are designed to get rid of small ships. And the way that this uh, these do it is it doesn't launch these individually or as pairs. Oh no 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 no. What this does, it launches them all, every single one in each stage in a massive spread. And let's bring that back in again and one should be my engine. Um, what that does is, what it does is, it fires each of these rows in tandem. Now, I don't think it's kept the order layouts. So, what it does is press space bar. Let's press space bar again, and again, and off we go. That's it, that's how it fires them. It fires them in a massive spread. They all flail around all over the place and hit everything. And then, once they've reached a set distance, which is about 400-ish, they all go boom. Let's get away from my little ship there. There you go. There we go, they all explode. Now, uh them exploding, unless they explode right next to something, isn't that useful. But you can see the size of the debris field that these cause when they fire off. It's absolutely insane. Uh, this is designed to absolutely decimate a fleet of closely packed ships or to just destroy uh, something that's uh, in the way. These can, I believe, give moderately sized capital ships a run for their money. But... The bad thing about Assault Ship is that no armour, they've got nothing protecting them, they are fairly vulnerable, they do have a lot of fuel and they have very economical engines, and have a lot of firepower. Again, they are another example of a glass cannon, but the Assault Ships are armed with small weapons and the bombers typically are armed with large weapons. There's not that much of a difference between the uh, bombers and the Assault Ships, really, uh, in thought. But in design, I wanted the assault ships to go up in pairs, so they wouldn't have lots of shots, but there would be multiple ships to, to launch an assault against the enemies. Uh, now let's see if... I'm going to bring that back up. I'm going to select you as a target. I'm going to point at my target. Uh, point at target. Now this is with our RCS, you see he's fairly manoeuvrable. I wanted to do an experiment with this ship. The experiment was that this was designed to be quite short and stocky and wide. Uh, these type of ships tend to be a lot easier to control as opposed to a long lengthy ship like uh, the interceptors and the bombers are. And they are indeed that. If I have my RCS ports knocked out or the RCS damaged or used up in any kind of way, uh, then I won't have a problem, really. So, let's take a, a view from what's inside. As you can see, 
that's my view from inside the cockpit and we are lining up on uh, our other ship and we're going to fire again so firing in three two one <laughs> look at that there's just a massive explosion as there's, there's these spiral off and hit and things are blown up now you notice that craft isn't dead but there's a lot of stuff which has been blown off it and you can see it's been completely split in half the engines have been taken off it's got bits of my current ordnance just stuck on it moving it around that one should blow up as well, yeah that blew up doing extra damage look at that, snapped off more bits there so on a general uh, these assault ships are designed to be extremely heavy hitting that's what they're meant to do, they're meant to scare the pants off people uh, okay so uh, that is the spider assault ship and I'll bring you in for the second next one. Uh, welcome back to our second assault class ship. Now this ship has been, I've, I've called this an assault ship uh, mainly because it doesn't fit in with the interceptors and it doesn't fit in with the bombers. Uh, it doesn't have the silly amount of firepower that the spiders do. What this is, it's a drone uh, which is designed to go up with the carrier called the Leviathan which will be in a little bit later. Now this is the Leviathan is designed to carry four of these so altogether they do deliver one hell of a punch and it has ten of these shots. Again with the assault ships it's, rel it's not armoured in any way shape or form but it has quite a lot of fuel for its size, is designed to go out quite a long way do its job and then come back with its job finished. As you can see it has quite a few backup engines, a nuclear engine for economy and very simply a robot brain which is hidden in the middle just here. And All this is designed to do is to simply get to a target, shoot at it and then retreat back to the mothership uh, where it can be protected by the mothership itself. So, a relatively simple craft, but four of them working together as a pack, being controlled by their mothership, they are a force to be reckoned with. This is Cryx Industries' very first uh, completed capital-class ship. It has multiple crew compartments and multiple robotic backup systems. And if I open her up and make her look a bit pretty... There you go, as you can see all the control panels, uh, the ladders which actually provide a little bit of light and a bit of definition to the ship coming out there. Uh, as you can see uh, she is a dedicated gunboat, uh, it's the type of class of ship that I have, um, I have named as a dreadnought, so she is uh, called the, the Megalith, a dreadnought class capital ship. She has one, two, three, four, five engines on the back there, as long as well as multiple control devices uh, here and here. As you can see, she is very heavily armoured, and the armoured is slow to deflect uh, as many shots as possible. Uh, this is my first ever built capital class ship, and as you can see, it's very open from the front. Pretty much the entire front cockpit and the uh, the rear control cockpit are actually open to be shot at so but there are robotic systems inside so that if it all goes wrong uh, the ship can still be controlled from within now this ship is armed with one two three and yeah it's armed with three anti-capital class weapons nice and snugly hidden within the armour uh, the only way to actually armour these up is to have the armour quite a way away from them because when these launch they do cause a lot of debris and the backwash can destroy anything that's completely within. Now this is, bu uh, this is built uh, to withstand most impacts from the side but with the side being the most easy target or above so the armour is slow to deal with those kind of attacks. If somebody tries to shoot it from the rear, uh, where it is mostly open, or the front, which are the narrow profile targets, they'll have an easier time of actually shooting at my ship. But they won't have. They'll have an easier time with armor, but they'll have a harder time with the profile of it. She's quite a wide old girl, and currently has not been deployed in anger by Cryx Industries uh, versus anybody. But she's in our arsenal ready uh, for a quick launch. Uh, she's a lot smaller than the other capital class ship that we have as she was our first and she's a little bit easier to get off the launch pad as she is just literally a dedicated gun. 
She is has the same amount of firepower that our bombers have got, but she is designed to stay in orbit and provide a fleet support. She has docking clamps here uh, all over her of different sizes, allowing different vessels for to dock up to her, allowing this ship, once the ammunition has been expended, uh, to uh, change its role to becoming a fleet support and resupply vessel allowing her to transport RCS fuel and uh, anything else that uh, the fleet needs from this ship while remaining a solid bastion able to withstand many many shots. So that is our Dreadnought class ship, the uh, Megalith. This is my second capital ship, named the Leviathan. This is an assault carrier capital ship, as opposed to a Dreadnought. And the assault carrier ship, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It carries up our assault ships, our four Guardian class assault ships. Uh, the Viathan, uh, Leviathan also has the same, uh, has actually more firepower than our Dreadnought class capital ship. If you can think of it as such, the uh, this is about is slightly longer than the Dreadnought class ship. So this is the same as a Dreadnought with an extra bit slapped on the back. It's got a lot more engines in a uh, cluster uh, at the back, and it has uh, more. Uh, crew capacity as it has a larger pod on the front and it's covered with a lot more protection. Uh, this currently vessel currently um, outdoes the uh, the Mega Lift, which is the Dreadnought. Uh, it currently outdoes it in protection. This has more armor generally all around. It outdoes the Dreadnought in firepower, in its own personal firepower, which are the long chibi like structures on the side at the front here, which each launch. And of course, it also has its own assault drones, which basically this is a true mothership as opposed to just a, a dreadnought attack ship. The true mothership is able to launch multiple drones, it can support its fleet, has multiple uh, docking ports all over this thing allowing it to uh, be a, a refueling vessel for smaller ships. It has utilities uh, which it can launch uh, Currently it is loaded with the uh, very small micro satellites that I have, but it can have anything else there. I can even add with enough space another one of these assault drones. Although to be honest, for this ship and for the amount of uh, RAM that's inside my computer, this ship in its own particular is bare pushing the limits of what I can do. Uh, so there you go, this is uh, Cracked Industries premier a uh, premier ship, uh, it is our giant capital class ship, able to launch strikes against their enemies and protect our assets to foreign planets uh, around the globe. It's, uh, it has featured uh, as the first capital class ship launch that I have had in my latest video. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and check that one out. And I'm going to show you the failed capital class ship as a little bit of a bonus thing to this one. The uh, failed capital class ship is literally too big for my computer to handle uh, with a launch stage. So I'm going to load that up for you in a second and hopefully it won't crash my computer. Now this is the... I call it the failed capital class ship. The um, I rather stupidly named it the Titanica, so obviously it's never going to fly. Uh, this ship is absolutely massive. I'm not even kidding. The uh, the Dreadnought and the Leviathan would be dwarfed by this. This is absolutely massive. So big, in fact, that its launch stage is actually half hidden all the way down in the floor. There's a lot more where that came from. Uh, what it has got at the back, it's got uh, these four clusters of engines either side with four clusters in the middle. I'm using ladders as a light source and also a means to get around. It's got a three-man command pod in the middle there and if I scroll all the way up it has a two-man command pod here looking directly out. Now it is completely covered with armor. In fact it's not just covered in armor it's covered in a double skin of armor designed to deflect even the nastiest of large blows. Unfortunately, due to the amount of strutting, the amount of armor, and the amount of sheer parts on this thing, um, let's have a quick look at Metjep for it to tell us how heavy this is. Now, this vessel info weight isn't.
it's uh, vessel, vessel mass. Look at that, 1,571 tons, and that's without a proper launch stage. This launch stage here was only partly through building before I realised that it shouldn't work anyway. To get this to work, I would have to uh, reduce the armour count by a lot, because each bit of armour is held on by multiple struts. It does have a large amount of weaponry. Each weapon stack, if I go zoom all the way in, goes all the way down, you can see there, all of this is weapons. These are anti-capital class weapons, they're very widely spaced, and what it would do, it would fire two shots from uh, the inner, and then it would fire two shots from the outer, and then two shots from the inner, uh, and so on and so forth. You would actually have nine anti-capital shots. But the way this is designed, the way this is so far, uh, so large across, that this would only be really useful against a capital class ship, because anything small, these would probably pass either side of it. Now this again was designed to be a, uh, a kind of mothership, which should have docking ports on it, unless I remove them. No, it doesn't appear to have docking ports, never mind. Uh, I was part of the way through building this before I realised that the lag was just killing it. It has a lot of control devices, it's meant to have uh, docking ports on it so that other craft can dock onto it. But this ship is just absolutely colossal. Um, it's a bit hard to put that to scale, um, but yeah, the um, the dreadnought would probably go from where the bottom of the engines are to roughly about here on the ship. It would be less than half of the size of this ship. Um, when I try and load this, I don't want to do this for you because it can cause my computer to crash. And as I'm recording as well, I think this would not be a good thing. But this looks absolutely pretty, but as soon as it loads physics, it kind of forgets and deletes stuff because only this program is still a 32-bit program and it kind of drops a lot of equations because it gives itself a certain amount of time uh, per frame to do all the calculations before it forcibly moves itself onto its next frame. This causes uh, problems with the calculations because it misses out a whole load of them because it's trying to do so many calculations because it renders and calculates every part even the parts you can't see like the bits that are encased and this is completely encased uh, there are a lot of bits inside of this there's lots and lots of fuel tanks lots and lots of backup systems and RCS clusters and additional thrusters and all kinds of gubbins uh, so in the end I had to chalk this up to a fail because even at this stage of development not even fully built I couldn't even get it to load properly on the launch pad without it literally falling apart at the seams and just collapsing it wasn't things breaking there was no explosions it's literally all of the struts and the entire thing for some reason they were always getting uh, calculated last so therefore they weren't even included so apparently this thing didn't have struts and a lot of this armour is just held on by struts so the whole thing would collapse and destroy itself uh, quite humorous but incredibly laggy and you'd see the explosion it falling apart about one frame every 10 seconds so yeah I've decided not to bother progress with this because even if I strip the parts off it it would still have too many parts so that's my uh, that's my failed fail ship I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this little uh, this is for your look at Cryx Industries uh, fleet of capital class ships and below and hopefully as uh, the uh, the series, the PvP series progresses I'm going to be able to progress and build more refined or more entertaining ships to have fun with so in the meantime I've been 4040 you guys have been amazing and hit that like button if you've enjoyed this or subscribe if you're not subscribed and if you don't want to have to deal with all the Google Plus stuff feel free to contact me by Facebook or by Twitter the links are all below anyway I'll see you guys later have fun and good night